is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and Brandon are going to be doing our top 10 publishers. Finally, this is one that uh, I've thought about doing for a long time, but I never felt like I could do 10, you know? Um, but after so many years, we can finally do, do 10 publishers. Now, I think this is a pretty straightforward list, just 11, oh, yeah. uh, 11 number one, based off, um, you know, it's, was this hard for you? Um, not making the getting my 11. Yeah. It was getting them wiggled around like, because I had to make some concessions with some because there may be one company that has a lot more games I like, mm -hmm. but then there's some that I know I kind of almost did like a, okay, these, this is, they make my kind of game. Yeah. They maybe may only have a few games out right now, but okay. they're, they're yeah. moving up. That's interesting. Um, because I was well, thinking the same thing, because there are a few publishers where it's like they've made three games, but all three games have been fantastic. Yeah, and so everything they put out, I'm on. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. So I have my laptop here so we can pull up these publishers if we need to. Um, however, obviously, we rank these, so we probably should know at least some of their games. Uh, let's go... How many crossover do you think we'll have? A lot, because there's not a yeah, whole lot of publishers. There'll, there'll be a handful, I'm yeah. sure. So I'll say... Six, yeah, five dude, or six. We'll probably, we'll probably have ten, <laughs> like ten, like nine or ten, uh, right. just because. Yeah, there has to be. It's just gonna be in which order. Uh, so, we'll get started. My number eleven, my honorable mention is Van Ryder Games. Uh, Van Ryder Games is uh, they have made the big score. They have made. Um, Detective City of Angels. They did another one that I have over there called the Caruso Crew. Um, they're an honorable mention because, like you were just saying, they haven't done a lot of games uh, that have. Uh, but what they do make... Uh, oh, they also did a Hostage Negotiator. Um, and then one on Kickstarter that will be coming out next year will be Final Final Girl. Um, yes. But every game they've made has been bangers. They Oh, they also did... Did they... No, they didn't do that one. Hold Which on. One? Sword Crafters? No. They didn't do Sword Crafters. No. Uh, I was like, ooh, that game's fun. It's <laughs> stupid, but it's fun. I'm really trying to find where it's at. Really, yeah, uh, I don't know about that, but like you said, true to uh, the, the Detective City of Angels. Yeah. They have those graphic novel. The graphic uh, novel ones that are books. just insane. They did their only pooper. I think was like one called Salvation Road. I think. Oh, and I have no idea what that. It is. was one that very like early, early. Gotcha. Years, and it didn't like hit super yeah. well. But everything else, I think they kind of. I think went for yeah, it. especially so all the games that that we that that I was just talking about, Van Ryder is a company that if they're making something, I'm I'm immediately interested because mm -hmm. uh, they also do extremely unique themes that. Uh, like that are engaging, that are thematic with uh, with very fun mechanics. But in comparison to all the other publishers that I have on the list, they only have a, like three or four games that are really good, uh, whereas other companies have way more than that. So that's my number 11, Van Ryder Games. Okay, my number 11 is the same thing. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said it earlier. But right. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Van Ryder, <laughs> it barely made my list, mainly because I was very late to the game with this company. Mm -hmm. um, like, Hostage Negotiator first came out a handful of years ago. Yeah. And I and just recently box. played it, like, this last year. Yeah. And then I went all in on it, mm -hmm. went and found everything, back to Final Girl all the way. I haven't played. Those are the only two games I've played at Van Ryder, though. So, gotcha. I mean, they're, they're one of those, like, that's why it's my honorable mentions, because yeah, I'm looking to see where yeah. they go. Um, I think their best one, ooh, that would be fun to talk about what their best game is. Um, uh, but like each one, say what their best game yeah, is. Yeah, we can't do that with really one of them, because we have a top ten that we're going to do later on today about one one of oh. the companies, so it would give away the number one. Um, that's true. But, if I, so up until we get to that one... Uh, I think their best one to me is definitely Detective City of Angels. Mine's Hostage Negotiator. At the time, it, and it'll be eclipsed by Final Girl, I have a feeling. You probably. Because uh, cause Final Girl's taking Hostage Negotiator and taking a next step with actually having... Like locations movement. for you to go to. Yeah, that so, will be nice instead of just the... I mean, the Hostage Negotiator doesn't call for that because it's usually the right. guys hold up in the spot and you're trying to talk to him. Um, Plus, but, I'm a solo gamer and that's just... Phew, 
Right, right exactly. <laughs> uh, but I think Detective City of Angels, they just did a, a huge spin on that genre that no one ever... It's, it's mm-hmm. always the same. It's always fully cooperative. It's always, you know... Here, here's a who done it. Here's a case. Now they tweak a Chronicles of Crime with app integration. Detective Modern Crime has the laptop. Sherlock Holmes has the book. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but Detective has the only one where, where there's a DM yeah. that can. My favorite thing about that game is the fact that if you have someone who's really good at salt, like detective stuff, and you have someone who's not so good, the person running it can make it easier for one player and harder for the other. Right, right. So it's just, it's it's fantastic. So, well, that was great. We already had our first crossover. So I, I think we will have 11 crossovers. Really? I right. No, there's no way you'll have. You, there's one of mine on here you, you won't have. I don't think you've played any of their games. So my number 10, we're going to have nine because you're not going to have my number 10. My number 10 is level 99 games. So another publisher that they don't have a lot of games well they actually they have a lot of small games and mainly two massive games but the content that they have for both of these games for uh millennium blades and battlecon is just so expansive and the reason why i level 99 for those two games in particular are so integrated in that video game kind of theme or in that collectible card game theme mm-hmm. um that it it's truly engrossing. Battlecon is the best probably fighter game out there. Uh, whenever you're comparing it to a versus, you know, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Tekken, whatever. Right. Uh, and actually, the new stuff is finally getting ready to ship. So I'll have it all organized and it'll be sexy. <laughs> I'll be like tuck boxes and just like, okay, let's fight. Instead of having it all in just some fucking right. really useful box just piled in there. Uh, I know you don't really care for Battlecon, but... It wasn't bad. I mean, it's just had that one mechanic. Yeah. And, was, and I mean, they've know. done a complete overhaul of all the characters, yeah. b- balancing and stuff like that, which is why it took so long. I don't, definitely didn't dislike it. it just Sure. Yeah. Um, and then Millennium Blades is a, is a phenomenal, you know, collectible card game simulator mm-hmm. uh, with real-time elements. Real-time, you have like 20 minutes to do one round. Um, that... And then they also have their small ones. They have Cell Swords. They have, uh, oh god, what's it called? Noir something, which is like a, it's like a tile based. You know, one person is like a a murderer and is trying to kill people. The other person is a detective trying to well, find them. They did Arch and the Consortium, which was a big. I didn't play that one though. That's so good. is so it? That, that's the one level ninety nine game I've played in. Gotcha. You know, really in depth. Uh, worker placement game yeah about running a university that's and i saw that and i remember they came out with like a second edition yeah and it just seemed so cumbersome yeah uh, to try and jump into there's a learning curve on it for sure yeah like like a friend of mine taught it to us in about 30 40 minutes yeah um but once you get once you play around it's one of those games almost kind of like dinosaur island where gotcha you, you play you need to play around and yeah. then just reset because oh, okay. once you see how the mechanics work and your decisions and what they yeah. do, then you're good to go. Right, and they've also made yeah. their Indines world, which in the new Kickstarter comes with like a, a like an art book but lore book, which is you know anime wild, just mm-hmm. like what the fuck is going on. But right. I forgot they also did Pixel Tactics, yes. which was really good. It's just not intuitive because it's like hey. Here's your cards. They can all do seven different things, and depending on where you place them on your board, it was just it was a lot. Wasn't uh, that their? Was that did that come before Battle Endines? The Pixel Tactics Battlecon, or uh, I think Pixel Tactics might have been their precursor to that one. Yeah, there was uh, Pixel Tactics came out in uh, where is it? Came out in 2012. Battlecon came out in 2013. Okay. Yep. So, I mean, but Pix- I mean, Pixel Tactics is great. Also, has characters from their Endines world. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just not really that intuitive. So that's my number ten, level ninety nine games. All right, my number ten has one of my favorite games of all time in their uh, catalog, um, mm. and it is uh, Tasty Mineral Games. Okay, TMG. I was um, and TCG the reason games. it's not okay, uh, Tasty Mineral's put out some really good games. You know, Orleone. Mm-hmm. That's my deal. Uh, that uh, Hentis, Coliseum, Yokohama, they, they've done they've done a lot of good games, but the reason they're not super high on it is because they are, these games are already out 
a lot of mm-hmm. times and they are either partnering with a company or bringing them overseas. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, they do a lot of Kickstarters with to bring these out. So whether it's, um, I can't think of, uh, like Belfort was one of their other ones yeah. and stuff like that. But uh, Yeah, they have their name on a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's names on a lot of stuff, and then but their, their small games are junk. Yeah. Um, but Orleans itself and that line, mm-hmm. the site except for stories, um, <laughs> God. Uh, is reason they're number 10. And, I, you know, I always look at what they're putting out because they always do the deluxified stuff. Yeah. Um, so you can you get played the, Gentis, right? That was them? Yeah. Was Gentis them? Yeah. And it was good. Yeah. It, it just it wasn't, you know. Right. Or, Orleans is still above and beyond the... The best I think game it's probably they've... their best game. The game, the games that they have right here on Board Game Geek is Orleans, Yokohama, Village. Village was actually pretty good. And see, the Village was another bring over. Really? Yeah, a lot of them. That one just... had an interesting mechanic where your workers actually died. Yeah. Uh, and and I remember liking it. I don't. Know, I got rid of it. Just I have it at home. I really? haven't played it yet. But but they almond they, ray. Yeah. Gugong. Yeah. They make their living taking porting games from overseas. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of like Stronghold. Got to. Stronghold does that too. Yeah. Stronghold will bring games over from another place and and put them into American distribution, and that's yeah. what they do, which is great. Um, yeah, it's it's wonderful. It, it but that's why they're number ten because it's kind of like a they're really hit and miss. There's sure. some really good stuff, and then there's some crap. Yeah. Um, but their good stuff is so good that that's why it's here. Gotcha. Awesome. Okay. Well, my number nine. Is a company that we actually were just talking about. They're probably going to actually start picking back up pretty soon. And that is... Uh, you don't remember? Plaid Hat. Plaid Hat. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you forgot already. Uh, Plaid Hat, uh, this is actually a company that I first learned about whenever I got into the hobby. So there's kind of a nostalgia factor there. Because I got I got Mice and Mystics mm-hmm. when I got into the hobby. I got a game called City of Remnants which was uh, Shut Up and Sit Down. It's one of their first reviews I watched, and it was actually pretty... That review was pretty fun. That's when Paul was still with them. And then Paul was great for Shut Up and Sit Down. When Paul was there, Shut Up and Sit Down was good. Uh, but yeah, so Plat Hat has done Dead of Winter. They've done Guardians. Bring Guardians back. Bring Guardians back. <laughs> They've done uh, that line of the storybook games, uh, Stuff Fables, Comanauts, yeah. uh, Aftermath. Um, kind of like... Still, they're Mice and Mystics, you know, kind of kids, but not kids game. But they do that storybook right. stuff, which which I like. I think that's an interesting way of doing a board. Instead of having the tiles, you just have it all in the book. Um, they have, they did Summoner Wars, which, I mean, I don't like. But Here's the thing with Plaid Hat that makes them stand out uh, is they're pioneers. Yeah. They, they're opposite of what I just talked about with TMG. Yeah. Summoner, or, uh, Plaid Hat creates stuff. And hopes it sticks. Mm-hmm. Summoner Wars. They're using that's a, that's a card game where the cards are supposed to be miniatures. Yeah, they did the storybook game. They did mm-hmm. the Crossroads stuff with Dead of Winter, which was a, a that was oh, the first and thing Gen Seven, which was such a oh, right, banger. <laughs> right, but I, I know, mean, yeah. like, like they they aren't afraid to try true new things. Yeah, and and I know some of it falls. They they tried with um, the the pirate ship one, that the legacy one that totally. Oh fuck, Seafall. Seafall. I mean, they they, no, but they, they were going it? for it, yeah. you know, and it it fell flat. Yeah. But um, that's like that's a really good point. <laughs> um, which yeah, and they're they're one of the few companies we were just talking about this that doesn't do Kickstarter, right? And I swear they did super super fantasy I brawl. That doesn't sound but right. Maybe but, it's not them, but. I mean, if uh, it was, like I said, they were with Asthma Day at that time. So yeah, and now they're back by themselves. Yes, Mythic they, Games. Col- it was it okay. wasn't it wasn't planned. It was Mythic Col- Games. Colby. Um, the owner of it mm-hmm. now, he, they sold to Z-Man. Yeah. And then Z-Man, of course, went Asmo Day, mm-hmm. And then he decided to pony up and he bought the company back from Asmo Day wow. to become a solo company. That must have been pricey. I don't know how. <laughs> but they really weren't putting, I mean, I know Forgotten Waters was kind of a... Forgotten, and that's what I was going to say. Forgotten Waters is their latest banger. But they banger. kind of stalled out a little bit when they were with Asthma Day until Forgotten Waters, they stalled, you know, because yeah, Gen 7 fell flat. They stalled out. All their games were getting and, delayed. Yes. This, this last Gen Con, not in 2020, but the one I actually got to go to, a lot of the games they didn't have to yeah. show anyone. Well, I guess they had the, the Frankenstein game. 
too, which wasn't abomination yeah. error frames. I mean, when I um, see people post, they're like, "Oh man, this game's so much fun." I'm like, "You yeah. poor person." In my in my opinion, they were there at their best, and they will be again. I mm-hmm. think when they were the small independent yeah. company, that was when they did their best work. Yeah, um, I know. So. I believe they did. Uh, well, they did Ashes, mm-hmm. Rise of the Fiends, Dungeon Run. I still love Dungeon Run, even yeah. though it was broken as hell at some points. And they, and they talked about Dungeon Run two. For years, Domination was just so bad. They had done. A, they had talked about Dungeon Run two for years, and then they got bought it's up and back, stuff. Isn't it? Well, it, or it's I, it's called Dungeon something. I'm I, hoping it does. I feel like I saw but something. Bistro, that... Mr. Bistro is the is the uh, designer, okay. not, not the original. And then it kind of when they got bought out and stuff. I mean, Dungeon Run two just kind of just disappeared. Yeah. And then they've been there's been all this talk about it, so I'm kind of hoping maybe it comes back because yeah. um, it it's in the Summoner Wars universe, right? But I mean, yeah, um, you're right. With with the the crossroads system with, for Dead of Winter was phenomenal. Forgotten Waters is great. Ashes um, was a unique LCG yeah. type game. I think their the biggest and... flop with I mean and that's that's the thing is like the reason why they're at nine, even though we're raving about them right now, is because a lot of the ones that are higher, it's just like well, they have a lot of games and they haven't been failures. Mm-hmm. Abomination Era Frankenstein was one of the worst games I've played. Mm-hmm. Um, Gen Seven, I could have blown up their headquarters with how how bad and a spit in the face and. Right. Regardless of whose fault that was, kind of like you know, everyone blames EA in the video game industry mm-hmm. for a failure uh, of a video game. If that was Asthma Day's fault for them being like, "Hey, charge a hundred dollars for this half baked game," whatever, it still has their name on it. The blame has to go somewhere, and it's going to apply yeah. that. But Forgotten Waters with their app is just phenomenal. Guardians, <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, Summer Wars 2.0 is being announced so i'm ready for i mean that. i'll check it out and then my <laughs> submistics is just so heartwarming and, and delightful i know i mean I, we can keep talking about like some of the games that they've made uh i've oh specter ops is diarrhea in a box i need to try that i heard i don't like it i, think I heard it's broken covenant the second game though they balanced it right really it is what i've heard now i don't know if that's true or not but i'd heard the balancing issues but this broken covenant yeah. standalone it's super Punch better. Fighter is what I was singing with Plat Hat. Okay. There was Super Fantasy Brawl, which is... Oh, and then they did Tail Feathers. Yeah, so... So, yeah, so Plat Hat, they, they are definitely a name to... Uh, even if it's whatever game they're coming out with. I remember they were going to do... Uh, with their crossroads system, they were supposed to do one in space. I think Western was also... Well, uh, they, they had the vote. There was... The one that got second place was a camp theme, like a camp horror theme. Oh. There was camp... There was camping... There was space, and then there was. Um, I really want to say Western, but I'm, I'm, that might have been it. But and the voting went with Space One, so then they did Gen Seven. Man. But I think that was it. There, because you know, like hundred dollars and it has like a sixty dollars expansion. Just happen, so I don't know how. Sure. What happened with that stuff? Yeah. I. They're but, independent again now. Colby's in charge. Yep. I, I, Isaac I'm, Vega I'm left, which sucks. They could still collaborate. He's not That's working true. for a company. That's I mean, true. He could, yeah, he might just be know. an independent uh, yeah. designer. So we'll it's exciting. Plaid Hat has... I think they're going to start doing really good again. Forgotten Waters, was that their first game outside of when they went independent? Well, uh, you mean... Because they were still acquired when Forgotten Waters came Okay, out. Oh, okay. He just recently. Like, I'm talking like gotcha. the past couple weeks. Gotcha. They separated. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, that's my number nine. Plaid Hat Games. All right, my number nine. I'm going with Z-Man games. Z-Man, they are not on my list. Um, and I have them on there for games like Car- or not uh, like Feast for Odin, Caverna, yeah, um, Stone Age. I even put Pandemic on here. Oh and shit! Not, not because it's just because that's what they're known for. You know, it's that's it's, true. Um, you know, I think that's why they're not on my list because I was looking through Z-Man games and I was like Pandemic. Pandemic, pandemic. What else have they made? <laughs> yeah, and um, so that I mean they've put out a lot of cool stuff, a yeah. lot of crunchy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Feast for Odin is. Definitely uh, they one even had their hand in Carcassonne. Oh, I didn't um, know. You know, like they, they were one of the ones putting out Carcassonne. They're an yeah. older company. You know, some of them are hard yeah. because there's games where I'm like, really, they did this, but then it's like another company did had yeah. this game, but then Z-Man now ha- now owns right. it. Right, so, so it's kind of a Every tricky. printing that comes out has their logo on it. Right. Because I don't think, were they originally the guys for Agricola? Uh, no, that was... Because um, it's saying it's on their on their list now, but I'm it like... It is now, but it was... Um, I can't think of the name of it. That's fine. Uh, 
Yeah. Anyway, but it's it's got like a flag logo. In it. I can't okay, cool. It. Yeah, I the flag logo. It. Well, I can't think of the name of it right now. But anyway, um, they always put out really solid Euro games. You mm-hmm. know, like um, with Caverna and Feast Road, and I mean, that's yeah. just awesome. Yeah. Big time games. Yeah, those, uh, those are two games that really like because it's weird with z-man you think it's like okay here's z-man well what have they made okay i know they've done pandemic well what else and then you start seeing oh okay they did that they Mm -hmm. did that uh so yeah and then i guess like the latest one that everyone likes is uh oh i remember seeing archaeology Yes, and Z-Man is another one that got picked up by asmodee and it's kind of in a it's gonna be most of these yeah, yeah yeah unfortunately um but anyway just it's they used to put out a lot more games back when I was first in the hobby. Mm-hmm. Uh, they kind of slowed down significantly, but the stuff they put out now is pretty damn solid, um, and the quality's good and everything. So, so I always kind of check them out, you know. Right. I mean, especially lately, they seem to be, when they come out with their one or two games a year, it sure. seems to be pretty solid. Yeah, I mean their their top their top six are of course the two pandemic legacies, which I would agree: Feast for Odin, Agricola, Gaia Project, and Terra Mystica. Gaia Project, yeah, and I haven't played Gaia Project, but I haven't either. But there's like a huge following for Terra Mystica, yeah. and then if you like Terra Mystica, you'll like it's Gaia just Project. Space, space Terra Mystica yeah. and more streamlined is what is what I hear. But yeah, so but Stone Age is still. I mean, I know it's not on their top ones, but it's it's a classic. It's an sure. Green uh, kind of game and stuff. So, so yeah. I mean, that's that's about it for on that one. Alrighty. Yeah. So my number eight is. It's funny how a lot of publishers actually happen to have like acronyms for mm-hmm. theirs. So my number eight is actually CGE, mm-hmm. which CGE is an interesting. Uh, the Czech, yeah, it was a Czech, Czech games, games entertainment and, uh, edition. Oh, edition. That's right. Which is weird. But they've dropped, uh, they're one of those uh, companies that's also older, like, and all their games feel component-wise older, uh, but they always put out, re- like, cheaply made games, but they are always so much fun, fun to play. And one of the earlier ones that I remember playing uh, in the hobby was Space Alert, which was a programmable like real time where you had like enemies coming at you and it had a CD that you had to listen to and then you had to run like you had to program all your actions uh, like running around the ship and like activating switches to be able to or fire guns to be able I hated that you game. hated space well, alert real time yeah that one was crazy. true space alert especially yeah. with programming oh man <laughs> it was wild but uh, since then they've done uh, they've done alchemist didn't they do galaxy trucker. They did. I think they did Galaxy Trucker uh, as well. If I could see it from I'm here, they, yep, they did. Yep, they did Galaxy Trucker. They did Dungeon Pets, Dungeon Lords. Mm-hmm. Um, they've done Through the Ages, which oh. uh, is probably the best Civ game that's out there. Of course, they did the party games, Code Names. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have their hand in a lot of different like genres of games like you comparing code names to through the ages oh, yeah. you can have two vastly different ones yes. but also this company is one of the best companies to with their rule books by making them both digestible yeah. and entertaining the to humor. read yeah yeah it's it's phenomenal and usually it's whenever vlada is the yeah. designer behind the game that it's actually a funny rule book that also through the humor explains the uh the mechanics and, mm-hmm. and and the rules. Didn't they do adrenaline? Adrenaline CG. They did adrenaline as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, and adrenaline is a blast that's all but dead. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I have the solo variant printed out, but oh, I have not. T- I have not tried it at all. But CG also doesn't make a lot of games. Out of all the ones that I've been looking at here, uh, like uh, Plaid Hat had like. <laughs> Plat had like a hundred and something. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned TMG. Uh, who was the other one that you just mentioned that I'm already drawing the blank on? Uh, Z-Man. Oh, Z-Man had like 400. Uh, but uh, CG only has 88. Yeah. Uh, but all the, like, they're one of those companies that everything they make is solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's quality over quantity, which I'll take any day. They also did Last Will. Yes. Which I remember you you were yeah, saying that you liked. one. Uh, and of course, Galaxy Trucker is a hit, hit or miss. If I mean, I think it's, it's just a beer and pretzels. Yeah, I think game. it's I think it's a blast. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, like, CG, they also came out with Sanctum, that's their latest game. I wanted to try that. I didn't. <laughs> really? I mean, no. because it's like, everybody says it's like Diablo, Yeah, not a board game, and I'm just like, that might be interesting to try, but I don't yeah. want to spend the money on it. Yeah, that's so kind of why. it. No, no. Because <laughs> I remember watching run-throughs, and I was like, man, that just doesn't sound fun yeah. to me. But I don't like Diablo either, like so... Diablo. Uh, Oh man, one of their earlier games also was Tosh Kalar, which was like oh, that. Yes. You remember, like it was like yes, that gladiator. That God, where you had, like, you had to like their moves were, were like, like were different like, boxes. You had to do play this to do like a weird move. To, yeah, to like it was almost like a polyomino yeah, kind of yeah. thing. I remember. <laughs> I probably would like that now, but back mm-hmm. when I was in the hobby, I only wanted a Meritrash theme mm-hmm. thing, and I was like, really gladiator, but you move in like a horse shape. It's yeah. like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, through the ages. Oh, they also did Zulkin. Yeah, so that's a oh, thing. That's one I have. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to think. Wow, of my, it's right there. I'm trying to think in my in my game right. closet, like because I know I have some that had that. And yeah, Zulkin was, was one. Which means no, no, Ted to Walken's not because that's another. Company. Nope, nope, that's a yep, completely yep, different yep. company. So yeah, right. um, it's just the same designers, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like CG, just that's that's probably what put them higher up is because quality over quantity and digestible funny rule books with solid euro games so yep that's my number eight perfect well my number eight definitely defines quality over quality. are there two games <laughs> um and it's a game company that would never have been on my list six months ago um and it's cephalofair they've made one game they've, they've made two they've made three <laughs> four <laughs> If you count Frosthaven and, and no, they, and that's not out. You Jaws haven't played Frosthaven. But um, well, what I'm, remember I said there's gonna be stuff that like it makes me. Uh, before we start the video, there was gonna be stuff that was going to be, uh, not very much out there. But their companies like name, besides Gloomhaven, name their other two games. founders of Gloomhaven. <laughs> name their other one. Um, Jaws the Lion. Oh no, uh, fi- it was the uh, fire. One the, the uh, uh, Forge War, Forge War, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Fire One, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I put, fire on here, I put on here just because the everything they're going to be putting out as far as that stuff is solid in that. Gloomhaven I have a feeling world. this company will make nothing but Gloomhaven stuff, and that's fine, <laughs> and I'm okay with that because as much as I dislike the stuff at the point at that time, mm-hmm. them coming up and knowing, hey, let's put out a. A, a meaty intro game. Yeah. Let's put it out like Target. Let's get it mainstream. Yeah. Get more people. Like, I mean, that, that single handedly, Jaws of the Lions, what brought me into this. Yep. Because I hated it. It wasn't game. the trust of your only friend, Seth, who was telling you Gloomhaven was great. It was me I forcing to you head to play it, Jaws of the Lions. And, and I, I mean, that, and that's, that just goes along with uh, Childress. The, yeah. Uh, what's his first name? Isaac. Isaac Childress. Knowing he's already he already has the number one game on BGG and all that stuff, but then being like, yeah, Frosthaven broke the, all the records of, <sighs> yeah, of destroyed Kickstarter. Of Kickstarter. But then to sit here and be like, okay, I'm making all this money. Mm-hmm. And he goes, you know, I'm gonna listen to some of the critics saying, okay, that's a, it's kind of got some steep learning curve. Yeah. And I'm gonna put my time. And to put in a, I don't know, 20 some get mission Something like that, yeah. Deal. And sell it, put it out in Target exclusively to start with. Yeah. And and make it more a more digestible version. Yeah. And that right there tells me that the company mm-hmm. is strong. I mean, because he's going to. Well, at to the same move. time, he's also given out like f- hundreds of free scenarios. Right. Which is why, actually, so you know how we're doing, we're doing Jaws of the Lion and it has the scenario book. Mm-hmm. Which is by far better than the tiles. I was yes. listening to Rado actually talk about that and how with Frosthaven, while they're doing tiles, is because they can do free content, mm-hmm. free scenarios that if if they were going the book route, that, that would be it. Right, right. I mean, they did the... Um, it was called Capital Intrigue, the uh, uh, free whatever... <laughs> Drawing the blank. Campaign. Uh, consumer campaign. Uh, that was just horrendous, but like people got to vote on where the story was going, and then mm-hmm. they would make a story based off that. Um, so it, I, I, I mean, you're not wrong that Self Affair is a great company, 
but at the same time, they've made they've they've essentially made one game, uh, three games, for Founders of Gloomhaven, which was hot garbage, and Forge War. I do really want to try. I think I, I think I would I really like Forge time. War. Yeah, uh, didn't play it. I got like a steal of a deal on it. Sure, it just, you know. Yeah, but you know, I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, this is a top ten publishers list, and I just I looked at it, not necessarily entirely with catalog. Yeah, I looked at how you know, how the companies ran, how how they you know how they approach stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. That's that's a decent way of going. You know, I mean, it's it's not all. There's going to be another one down the line that may fit kind of in the same mold, but. So this company hasn't made any games, but no, they no. have the potential to make games. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, yeah, and and that's why Cephalofair is not not on my list right, because right. of that very reason. It's just like, oh yeah, okay, Cephalofair is a great publisher. They've made one game. It's like they could continue to make it. Found it. Frosthaven yeah. could just be dog shit, and it's not gonna be. Right. But well, like, and then if you think about it, yeah, they've made one game or have one universe, but that one game has how many hours yeah. and hours of content i mean it's there's so much content in that just the first one 90 you know that it's like yeah he I could mean, have split that into he could have easily broken up you know like five stuff. Games. yeah so That's it's true. just i mean he had a dream he had a dream he's like i want to make a fucking massive game with my own world and i mean gloomhaven itself kind of broke the mold for campaign style games uh and also, the best part about it is it's not six hundred dollars; it's a yep. hundred. Yep. So, yeah. All right, fair enough. I still don't think it should be. What was it? Number eight. Eight. Ah, okay, that's fine then. Yeah. Uh, all right, my number seven is my last acronym. Well, not really. I mean, they all kind of have an acronym. Yes, I can guess it. All right, go ahead. Alderac Entertainment Group. It is. <laughs> it is AEG. Uh, so AEG is actually one that they their games have been something that I haven't like always like I've never looked at like oh this is an AEG game now mm -hmm. I'm going to go after it until recently where my shift in games has actually tilted to where I'm drawn to their their style so and they also have some older ones like Istanbul uh, that I finally got a chance to try, and it's great. They've done, I guess, Love Letter. Um, but they've also, the big one that I really like is uh, Tiny Towns mm -hmm. and Edge of Darkness. Yeah. So those are the two games that I've played recently that put AEG on the map. And their their components are always fantastic. They did Mystic Veil vale as well, which I didn't like mm -hmm. base game. But I know they've kind of done a lot more with that world that it's... It, Kind of like Edge of Darkness, how it has so much content. Yes. Uh, Mystic Veil vale also does that, and it's like, oh, I kind of want to look into that. My my opinion would be that the thing that put them on the map for me mm -hmm. would be a game like Smash Up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Smash Up was the big. You yeah. Know, that's true. Um, I don't know they were doing stuff before that, and a sure. lot of good stuff after, but that was yeah. for me. That's what got me into. But they're kind of that that designer where it's just like their games are almost infinitely replayable, mm -hmm. especially Smash Up, which is probably their best game in my opinion. Uh, so much so that now they've done their own side box of Marvel, which is probably going to be bad. I'm gonna have to buy it, but yeah. I just don't know. How, just, is it even supposed to mix with the other stuff? I don't know. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I'm gonna have a, a pretty little pony Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, that's it, well, yeah, you that's know, what they're know. doing, and it's like that's just gonna be so yeah, weird. I don't know. But but yeah, Smash Up, and then Edge of Darkness is also almost infinitely replayable. It can't just, be as bad as the Munchkin set, right? It no, it can't. <laughs> just by theme alone, it cannot be as bad <laughs> as the Munchkin set. All the Munchkin set is anyone who owns it. Like, I I they know. have it, but it's like, we're just going yeah, to yeah, check that off. Uh, like, they've also done all of the Captain is Dead, which actually used to be a different company. Uh, I don't remember who owned it before, but then AEG took them over. The first Captain is Dead is really good. Um, the second one is eh, and then the third one is eh. Like, I haven't really cared about the other two. But the first one is a solid, like, survival, like yeah, your first kid. one was good. Because, yeah, we played that one together. Yeah. So, AEG just, whenever they release stuff, 
like it's always amazing quality. And they actually also come up with great storage solutions for all their games mm -hmm. that it's like, oh, great, I can all just have this here and in one spot, and I can play this forever. I mean, all you really need is Smash Up. That's the only game you ever need because you'll never right. not have, have a way to play it. All right. So that's my number seven, AEG. All right. My number seven is a crossover. Mmm. Plot hat? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, Dead Reckoning is age is another game that AEG is doing. That's a their swashbuckling yeah, card yeah. crafting thing. And actually, going back to AEG real quick, is they've invented their own system, the card crafting system, which before then was no one no one was doing that. Right. right. And I think they've really gone like they dove into that, or almost all their games are just going to have oh. card crafting in it. Yes. But they can keep making it innovative. Like, Edge of Darkness was the same system as Mystic Veil, vale, but they made it to where you're deck building and you're card crafting, but you're not building your own deck. You use other players' cards. So that's... I always like that. But yeah, so that was just another thing I had to say no, about AEG. So, Plaid Hat, yeah, right? Yeah, number seven was Plaid Hat um, for a lot, of, pretty much all the reasons you said before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually spent time... As a play tester for them for a long time, and then for their online version of Summer Wars and stuff, um, so I have a little personal, yeah, investment into it as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm super excited now that they're back on their own, mm -hmm. just because I think that that was when they were at their best, um, making their own decisions, not being under the thumb of the man, <laughs> you know, and stuff. Alex Madea, yeah. Um, so. It's. I mean, there isn't really, isn't really much more to say. Yeah, you know, we. It's, I it's, mean, we we talked about it pretty, uh, pretty extensively. They their future, hopefully, is bright. You know, I've, yeah. with with them announcing. Just don't things, ever so. release a game like Abomination, Era Frankenstein, or uh, uh, Gen Seven, and then they'll be good. I thought I heard there was an expansion for Abomination. Getting ready. That's well, that's. Plaid hat is disappointing already. <laughs> is it? Is it it's, a it's the game? Fix. Is it the it's this the, this makes this game good expansion? This is, the, this is the this is the would not let us put this part in the game, so that's why it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> they actually released a a variant, and I did a interesting topic over it because apparently there were a lot of complaints that they that they fixed, and it was just a free. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's how to fix the game. Gotcha. And at least they did that. I had to give credit where credit was due for that game, but yeah. Other than that, it was, uh, it was just trash. All right. So my number six is a game that we actually were just bitching about. It was from a game that we were just bitching about. It's actually Renegade. So yeah. Renegade is one of those companies that whenever, similar to all, like, what was it? Uh, CGE um, or AEG where you're just sitting there and you're like, oh yeah, that is them. Um, they also are kind of quality over quantity, uh, in terms of, like, they don't make a lot of games, but the games that they do make, either everyone seems to love, they put a lot of heart into it, and for the most part, their, their production quality is really good. Some games that they have made is, uh, Clank, like, which I don't like original Clank, but I like Clank in Space, and they've done Clank Legacy, which... At the point in time of this recording, I have a uh, email to their customer service because I'm missing shit. Um, <laughs> they've done Bargain Quest. They've done Bullfrogs. Which, you know who designed Bullfrogs? Which I did not know until Kat and I played it recently. I, I... The guy who made Role Player, Keith oh, really? Chica. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was looking and I was like, is that, is that the same guy? <laughs> uh and it certainly was. Uh, Gravwell is also yeah, Renegade. One of their big ones, Renegade, um, because they partner and they'll bring some stuff. They're also kind of, they do what uh, TMG does oh, and bring yeah. stuff over from Europe mm -hmm. because they also do the Raiders of the North Sea series. Yep, Raiders, the uh, Paladins. Paladins. But that's Garfield Games, but they partner with they them. They partner with them, yeah. The... And and so they get the credit for that as well. Yeah. So that's kind of what I was saying. And everyone loves Architects. Uh, yeah. Everyone, uh, I like Paladins. Uh, everyone loves the Raiders of the North Sea games. Their new one, Viscounts of the West Kingdom, is yeah, coming out. Yeah. yeah, they have that West Kingdom series, which is probably going to be at least innovative. Uh but they do, actually, weirdly enough, a lot of small box games that 
like they're, obviously they're not grandiose, but they're deep and they're fun. Fuse mm -hmm. is a real time you know game about defusing bombs. Uh, Bargain Quest is such a unique. You're a shop owner for War of the Heroes, and you get credit, you get points if they kill the monster. Uh, they don't do a lot of heavy games, but they do at least deep, relatively deep games. Yeah. Well, and then I like the fact that they've, with solo gaming becoming such a thing mm -hmm. lately, um, over the past few years, they've they're jumped into starting a signature solo series line. Yeah, um, was that them so, or Restoration? No, that's Renegade. No, it's, it's it Renegade. is Renegade. Um, so they had Proving Grounds was their first one. Mm -hmm. I you don't like it? I enjoy I like it, it. Um, just because it's super simple, super fast, all that stuff. Um, and then they had a Kickstarter for Warp's Edge that is going to be delivered here probably in the next week or so. Yeah, um, it's like a space version. It's totally a part of the Solo series. It's it's pretty sweet looking yeah um and i think they're going to continue doing this you know because they've been successful Which is cool. with yeah, them there's warp's edge um yep. and it uh you know i mean they, they they obviously are keeping their fingers on the pulse of the gaming community with doing mm -hmm. the solo stuff and yeah i mean and, and they don't like do that. they don't do kickstarters that much not know that often they, you know what bums me out though about that bargain quest kickstarter is the retail copy has a bigger box really yep and I bought retail. The one I got is a small, tiny ass box, and I'm like, why is it like this? So I'm yeah. honestly thinking about buying the fucking retail copy, and then mine's almost that size. I think no, there's like a legitimate like oh like a like a like a standard gaming oh, box. See, my retail is that size. Yeah, uh, the, the latest one is, one is an actual. I wonder if I can email them and be like, hey, I backed your Kickstarter. Why is my box the size of a fucking yeah, I don't know. play deck of cards? <laughs> Uh, and then their latest one, uh, which I forgot was Renegade, is the Search for Planet X, which was a deduction yeah, game right. um, that was actually pretty good. So Renegade's just one of those that are quality over quantity, which, as you're going to see, is a theme for me. Um, because the way I look at it is it's easy to make a shit ton of games. It's not easy to make good <laughs> good right. games. Uh, so Renegade just... They 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 have interesting themes and and solid games. So that's my number six. All right, my number six. Um, two or three years ago, probably would have been my one or two. Wow, um, okay. it's fallen off quite a bit because I'm getting. It's just they're just overreaching. I think. Oh, I bet I can guess what it it's, is. Come on, is there <laughs> yeah. a Simon? I'll, I'll, I'm always gonna call them Simon. They're supposed, yeah. They want to be called Come On now. Um, come but, on, buy our games. Right, I, guess, <laughs> um, I mean that. <clears throat> just the craziness that these guys, you know, when they had blood rage and all this stuff coming out, and and I'm not saying that the stuff they're still putting out on Kickstarter is bad because my one of my favorite games of the past year is Cthulhu: Death May Die. Yeah. Um, all the plastic, all the awesome minis. Um, it's just they they do Kickstarter so fast. I don't know what they have like six, seven, eight of them still being made, and it's like you wait forever for their Marvel stuff. Champions. No, no, Marvel Champions. Uh, Marvel United. Marvel United which is being delivered, I guess. I think the the base, the base stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you're right. <clears throat> like, but they do weird, shady things on their Kickstarters that a lot of people like. The Cthulhu Death May Die. It's just like boom, here it is. Oh, and you can only get this. You know, giant mini. If you're the first five that back, and then it. they added like you could get it for like 150 before, and then the next 500 was 200. And yeah, like, they kept and doing it's just it weird. It's like why? Yeah, I mean, which I I didn't back it because I was I'm not a huge huge Cthulhu mm -hmm. follower. Neither am I. But then I started watching some gameplays and hearing people talk about it. And I was yeah, like, that sounds cool. And, and now I love it. Now. And now they do it's, it to where like all their stuff. If you don't get it off, the, they're the ones that that heavily do FOMO. Mm -hmm. because all the exclusives yeah, all those stuff, exclusives yeah. if you don't get on their kickstarter then you're gonna pay for it later mm -hmm. like that unspeakable box for cthulhu this may die is insane i paid 150 for that yeah one. like i was selling my joan of arc stuff mm -hmm. and this guy messaged me he's like hey would you would you trade and i was like well i don't really have anything that i want to trade right now and i was like do you have the unspeakable box for fucking because he's like yeah i do i just don't want to trade it i'm like I'm like, fuck off, that's the only thing I want. Yeah. I would have traded the whole set of Joan of Arc for that unspeakable box. Yeah. Just so I don't have to spend $300. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, with CMON, it's just, they they put out good stuff. 
They put on um, fantastic stuff. Yeah, yeah. Eric Lang, which... Doesn't work just, for him anymore. Just recently. Well, he's went back to being an independent designer. He's going to make games for him. Yeah, so, but he's not like he's their not head. Their head they're, yeah, their lead designer. Yeah. Um, which he hinted around, I heard in an interview, that he is in the process of a... Of making Guardians for Plaid Hat Games. <laughs> it's like, what? A, a sequel to Blood Rage. Really? They said that on the Secret Cabal podcast I was listening Interesting. to. Interesting. It just, uh, it was in the press release. Play the civilians that the Vikings attacked. Well, because people were like, well, it's Ankh. Which would, would make sense, but in, it was in, it was in the press release or whatever when he was giving up his position. Hmm. Just a, what, a week or so ago. Yeah. And it was like, they talked about the his, up, you know, he's been working on a sequel to Blood Rage. Interesting. There's something I'm like, that'll be weird. That will you know, be but, weird. But anyway, so... They put out awesome stuff, awesome. You get so much stuff when you back a Kickstarter from them. I yeah. mean, Blood uh, Zombie Side was my first Simon stuff. I was had to get all the see, all the blood, all the uh, yeah. Zombie Side, all that stuff. You get so much crap if you drop a couple hundred dollars on a Kickstarter. Yeah, no, honestly, they probably eat and, the cost because right. of how much it is. And you know, I I don't know. I it's they're still great. That's why mm-hmm. they're number six on my list. I'm not. Yeah. Um, but I, I almost, I'm a little more trepidatious now to sure. to back stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, they also go heavy into that Chibli art, like oh, Marvel they, United, oh, Ar- yeah, Arcadia yeah, Quest, yeah, that, and stuff like that. that which that. Arcadia Quest, I didn't have a problem with it, but the right. Marvel United, I'm like, they look so dumb. They yeah. look so stupid. I hate them. <laughs> yeah, well, and I don't know what the superhero. I mean, Marvel Champions is the only superhero. Yeah, I mean, I know let Mar- uh, legendaries fine, but. All right. the superhero stuff that was coming out, I'm like, I don't care about that stuff. I have Marvel Champions. Yeah, coming exactly. Um, um, so yeah, I mean that's Simon. I'm, I'm assuming you're going to have Simon at some point, but but uh, you don't know. <laughs> but, I could um, hate them now. Right. You have you, you hate them so much. You have all the big wooden boxes with <laughs> with stuff. Fantasy in. Flight. Fantasy Flight. Well, you flight. have the Rising Sun, and you have the in Rising Sun. <laughs> that's it. That's okay. it. That's the only big box. It, the other one's Eldritch Horror and gotcha. Mansions of Madness, gotcha. and then Pandemic. So, so anyway, that's it. So shut up. <laughs> but right. uh, but yeah, Simon, just they're they're awesome. You honestly for, couldn't make a top unless you absolutely hate Ameritrash games, then. If you're making a publisher's list, Simon has to be on it. Yeah, and they have a few games that aren't miniature based. That, that yeah, but they're um, basically like dead, like they're like under the well, under the radar. Well, like Potion Explosion, they helped out with mm-hmm. Unfair, they helped out with yeah, um, just stuff like that. But um, but yeah, they're they're a minis company through and through. Well, they so. used to be called Cool Mini or not. Yeah, and now they're called. Come on, give us all your money or we'll fucking kill you. Yeah, exactly. My number five <laughs> is one that as I'm looking through their games, either they weirdly just have their hand in a lot of stuff and their icon, their logo is just not on it, or BGG just really gave them a lot of credit. Portal Games mm-hmm. is my number five. And I know games, so Robinson Crusoe was their first game that kind of brought them uh, to me. Then they have Empires of the North, Mm -hmm. then they have Imperial Settlers, 51st Stage, which I haven't played, but I basically have played it because I've played Imperial Settlers. Uh, And my favorite one that they've done is Detective, a modern crime board game. But Portal Games, is they're known for two things. Shitty-ass rule books, (laughs) but also innovative and deep games. Like, Imperial Settlers is, like, at its core is just a regular, you know, card laying Civ game, but, like, you combine, like, one of those factions with, like, another, with, like, more expansions that they, because they support their games. Mm-hmm. It's just like, boom, here's another expansion, boom. They're almost like the fantasy flight of, of, of Euro games, almost, because right. they just support it so well. Um, I will say... They have gotten a lot better with rule books, um, and they're also with their latest game, like Detective, a modern crime board game. They have been pretty interesting with that. Like they're doing a designer series where they're actually getting designers to create a scenario mm-hmm. for. So the first one they did was Rob Davio, 
which I played that one for Detective, and it was really good. So I'm excited for them to, if they just continue to, I mean, they, they probably have to support it. They made a fucking website <laughs> for it. So if they're just like, eh, we're done. It's like, why did you put all that work into right, the website? Right. So if they just continue to do these, hey, okay, Isaac Childress, write up a Detective case. Hey, Elizabeth Hargrave, Eric yep. Lang, you know, all these big name designers, write up a Detective, like, because Rob did a fantastic job. And they just did their season one, uh, so they're doing seasons for that. Empires of the North, they're popping out factions left and right. I just did their Barbarian Horde I, one. I need to get that one still. Um, That's I'm behind on. They're that. pretty good. Like out of the three uh, the expansions, the Japanese, Romans, and Barbarians are my least favorite. That's why I've been waiting to buy it. Because yeah, that's what I heard. But b- the Barbarians are my least favorite in Imperial Settlers too. Mm-hmm. So it's the, it comes down to play style. Um, I have a. Th- theory of why portal probably has a bu- their fingers in a bunch of stuff because they're the opposite of what they they port a lot of stuff to where are they from poland poland <laughs> so that so they port a lot of stuff from us to the europe oh okay so i'm saying so they're kind of like doing yeah, they the have opposite. blood rage right on the, and I'm like, right <laughs> so that a lot of that stuff they get credit for is stuff that they're porting over to europe gotcha and then, and by, and then so they're getting credit you know they're kind of like our um the one I said yeah. earlier, the um, uh, TMG, TMG and stuff like that. It's that's interesting. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so, so yeah, and then so that that makes sense. I mean, and even games that they've done, which unfortunately this game died. Cry Havoc was their uh, area control game with the unique combat system and, and uh, uh, asymmetrical, you know, factions. That one was fantastic. I it it felt like it needed some expansions. They released one, mm-hmm. um, but Cry Havoc was great. Oh hey, the they, one, they did oh. Cthulhu Death May Die. The one I think they probably have a Simon. That's how they get Simon games overseas. They might, yeah. Them. But anyway, um, the one that they of theirs that I never did get a chance to try that I keep seeing around for dirt cheap is the Alien Artifacts. That's another one that I was going to bring yeah. up. Um, that was I remember when that game came out. I think it was a couple of years back in yeah. like 2017 or something. Where there was like, hey, it's a 4X game in an hour. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay. It's pretty close. Like I, like, I still have it. And I'm thinking, and I'm like, should I get rid of that? But I'm like, no, like, it's a good game. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, yeah, you're not, it's not Twilight Imperium. You're not, it's not this expansive thing. But it's a manageable card game in an hour. And it works well with two. You do everything a 4X does. Mm-hmm. So well, a lot of times, like on, on Cool Mini and stuff, you can get, they have the bundle they sell mm-hmm. for like 29 bucks. It has all, all the expansions. Yeah. The solo. They have a solo variant. They have two, stuff. they have two small box expansions, which I think one of them, the first one, it actually adds like a new mechanic and a new set of decks. The other one was just kind of more cards. Uh, but yeah, I am all in. The reason why they're so high is because the games that they do make, I like all of them except mm-hmm. First Martians. That was yeah. that was their first because yes. they were trying to they were trying to capitalize off of the success of Robinson Caruso. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh, <laughs> I just see their next in twenty twenty one their next signature series called Petty Officers. I'm just scrolling through yeah. through the games, but yeah, the just their detective monocrime board game is just so good. I need to play that. Still Robinson, with my wife. For, yeah, well, it's cooperative, so she I have it. She, she likes that you. crime stuff. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Uh, it's it's fantastic. Um, and then Robinson Caruso is always just gonna be kind of a staple for me because Cat hates it, but I I love it. It's so wickedly hard, but still manageable. And that that system of Okay, you go explore, you go build, you do the top one. I cover the bottom because that's the consequence because you don't know what you're... And so then you shovel into the event deck. Um, they've done an expansion for that. I think they're about to do another one, release a box. And then they're also doing storage systems. So, uh, yeah, Portal Games is is great. I've actually met Ignasi at uh, the last couple Gen Cons I've been to. Super nice guy. Um he just seems like it very, very busy. He's trying to also do oh, streaming yes. and, and like be involved in web series, but they like to stay modern. Hence the title in Detective of Modern Crime Board Game. Mm-hmm. No, but I I've always just really liked Portal games. I don't know who any of these people are for Petty Officers. Mike Selinker? Skylar Woody. And yeah, Mike Selinker sounds familiar. Um, it's Selinger, I think, is how you say it. But well, that's... if it's Selinger, that's interesting because he has a K in his name. <laughs> he did Betrayal at the House on the Hill, Lords of Vegas, Pathfinder. 
Uh, he wrote for TSR, was a creative director for Wizards of the Coast, and held a leading role with Avalon Hill. So that could be fun. It's called Petty Officers. So, uh, yeah, Portal Games, fantastic. Really enjoy their stuff. Uh, and apparently they've just made 600 games. Not really, but... <laughs> A lot of it, a lot of it I'm seeing is Simon. Yeah, I bet they, I bet they got the contract to port it over. Yeah, although a, a negative to them slightly is they do a lot of promos. Mm-hmm. A lot of their games have promos, which a plus to that is if you go to Gen Con, they have have a huge table of all the promos, so you can just buy those. Um, one thing I would suggest is if you do have Detective Monocrime board game, if you can get the promos for the character um, things, which has the pictures of people. It just makes it aesthetically nice. You don't need them, but you can actually be like, "Oh, you have Dave Dickens. He's he's a suspect." You can just kind of put him because gotcha. you could actually play detective with a whiteboard and the beautiful mind strings, oh, really? and just That's be like funny. that that meme with like Charlie yeah. Day. Just <laughs> okay, that detective. That's actually what, one of the reasons why they're so high is because Imperial Settlers, Empires of the North. I have come around quite a bit on, um, especially because they're solo and detective. Yeah. So that's my number five, Portal. All right. My number five is a company that I have known about for a long time. They've played one game. They've only made one game. (laughs) There shouldn't be any more of those. (laughs) Um, I thought about putting... This is... They're not on my list, this other one, but I thought about putting Chip Theory on there. Oh, I did too. Just because I I love too many bones Mm -hmm. and I know their other stuff is... I'm going to end up owning all of it yeah. and everything. But anyway, that, I, I digress. Uh, this company I've known a lot about. I'd played their games, and then I actually went and worked for their booth at Origins a couple oh. of years ago. And it's White Wizard Games. Um, that company... They were, I, they I, were, they were a contender. Yeah, I love... I just love how they run the company for starters and just I, the people, you know, sure. and everything with yeah. it. But I'm um, putting out stuff... Uh, Star Realms was kind of their first baby, uh, and then they Still did the is. Hero Realms. They're but, not doing a Hero Realms foil right, deluxe right. edition, um, but and then Sorcerer hit the hit, and that was their big box deal. And it's they're compounding on that. Uh, they have they have the superhero game uh, coming out. I can't think of the name of it right now off the top of my head. Superhero um, game. Yeah, look them up because yeah, it's, I'm on them. It's a uh, it's got like this big yellow fist on it. It's like, and it's a dice placement, uh, one v one v one game. Okay. Um, it's not. But, you're not talking about Epic, are you? No. Okay. But um, well, and then they have Epic, which is a almost like a Magic, the Gathering kind of game. But every that card, app is every, pretty bad though. Yeah, I don't like the app. <clears throat> but every every time you play a card, it's like the most powerful card. Like you just yeah. you, you, haymakers until you win. Pretty but much. Anyway, um, so. But Sorcerer is kind of my 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 baby of that of mm-hmm. that company. Um, Rob Doherty, the the uh, owner guy, he uh, was a former Magic the Gathering pro, so you got a lot of stuff that um, uh, experience there. A guy that uh, the, made, the guy that he teamed with to make Sorcerer is also just a, a brilliant guy. Mm-hmm. Um, the best part about Sorcerer is one of their new characters is named Seth. Yeah, the and cowboy. He's a gunslinger. <laughs> That's so fucking cool. But I, can't I remember. think what was it? What was it? He like steals souls from people and shoots their soul. souls. Yeah, he's like a soul am- ammunition or That's something so, like that. That's it's so cool. That's so horny. But um, <laughs> are you looking up that, that game still? I'm still trying. I can't okay, find. it's That's... a shit ton of hero rooms and star okay. realm stuff. Um. But it's gonna be coming to Kickstarter before long. The one that maybe they find why. it. No, they're usually pretty. But um, but anyway, it's they really focus on one v one. Like all their games are one versus one or solo co op. Mm. Which they started throwing the co op stuff in with uh, Hero Realms. They can do a little bit of it with Star Realms now, and then uh, the last Kickstarter for Sorcerer made it a cooperative solo, which is gonna kick kick ass. I think. Yeah. Um, but I wish one where they really fucked up with that sorcerer Kickstarter is it's a separate box. Why they opted to not do a big box thing pisses me off well, to no end. And I, you know, and I actually talked to somebody. I'm the same way with Aeon Zen too. I actually talked to one of the people that work there, and I think their 
thoughts on the deal were that they didn't really know how much more because they, there's plans to put even more out. Oh, okay. And they don't want to like throw a big box out. So and it, not... the reason why Aeon's End hasn't made a big box. Exactly. Okay. I, I think they're waiting until they've kind of they're like we're done creatively. They're done and then maybe do That's something like that. That's fair. I'll um, just bitch and moan until then. <laughs> Is it called Kapow? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But um, it doesn't have a fist on it for well, the well, record. They're, they when they're doing their promos, they have this like big. Like, oh, okay, I see it now. Yeah, but anyway, it's um, it's a one v one like superhero fighting game, and it's uh, it, I it, can't do it anymore. You have okay. screens and stuff, and like, all the powers are on the inspired buildable dice, and all your powers are like on the inside of your screen. So I don't know That's much about cool. it. I'm a, I I assume I'll be. Is it Kickstarter? It's gonna it be. says 2019. They're, no, it got pushed because oh, the okay. sorcerer one got pushed. It's but oh. it's their next one. Like okay, they, neat. So it should be before long. But I'm hoping when I to be when I'm demoing with them next time at Origins. Hopefully that I'll get it's to, next year. Yeah, I know <laughs> that I'll get to uh, try that out. And, yeah. and stuff. But but anyway, uh, White Wizard Games. You know they're they're solid. They mm-hmm. um, they're actually a big enough deal because they were the the big sponsor of Origins that year that I went there for the first time, like they oh they, they were the big they, they were they were the head big title? sponsor the head title deal of Origins okay. so they they make a lot of money because yeah. their stuff is pretty cheap to produce and they sell a shit ton of it. The only thing, and, and I'm pretty sure it could have just been a guy that was working at Gen Con, mm-hmm. like he probably had nothing really no affiliation with White Wizard, but he sold me the storage set for Hero Realms when I bought everything. And uh, it was the shittiest story. It was that box that you know you just the, the initially <laughs> their initial stuff that they made for storage was from Legion, this company Legion that makes sleeves and oh, storage okay. stuff. And if you've ever used Legion sleeves, they're horrible. Yeah, the storage stuff. The sucks. sleeves it's, I got were solid. Yeah, uh, but yeah, but now they have the, the legitimate storage box for Hero Realms, and mm. Hero Realms is great. Um, White Wizard is a solid uh, publisher, like. Like you said, here Star Realms, Hero Realms. I, I went all in for their deluxe Star mm-hmm. Realms thing because uh, I played Star Realms on the app and I, I liked the app it a lot. Yeah, Hero Realms is fantastic. I want them to continue doing campaign sets for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's the plan, I think. So uh, I really think they probably they, they what what they need to do and uh, is the. They should do a massive Kickstarter for multiple campaigns. And the, the latest one they did was for their second story. Mm-hmm. And that's a long time to wait for just one story, you know, especially because it's like three missions. Mm-hmm. Um, they should probably just do a big one. But Sorcerer is by far their best game. And, and, and for me. they put the most love into, I yeah, think. for me. And I know what, what I think, I mean, what holds Sorcerer back a little bit is that dice combat. It's just kind of... For how elegant and and deep and and uh, heavy that that card play is with the smash up style, uh, fantastic artwork for it to just resolve by rolling dice is just kind of lame. Mm-hmm. So, but it's there. The rest of the game is so fantastic. I overlook that. But it would be cooler if they had kind of like a magic, you know, where it's just the way you dealt damage. Yeah. And whenever we we finally played it at this point. And I destroyed yeah, you. My ass. <laughs> like that, 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 the sorcerer I had just was not. It was not working it was for not you. A good, a good mixture of uh, decks. I don't even remember the sorcerer I had. No, I had the demon with the werewolf. Yeah, yeah, you, that, you were just wrecking. That werewolf shit was so cool. But and that yeah. sometimes you get speed bagged in in a one v one game. It's, it, it's just one of those things. You know? um, White wizard. That's a good choice. Yeah. All right. My number four is our second crossover. Oh. Uh, don't tell me. Is it Simon? It is Simon. Okay. I was in the same boat as you with, I was like, man, they make me so mad with how often they just, like, because Simon, like, takes advantage of Kickstarter. And whenever I was sitting there and I'm like, man, they piss me off so much because that's all they use. And they're a company, they're, they're like top three in probably the biggest companies in board gaming. And it's like they could, if if Plat Hat and Portal can afford to not do Kickstarter, so can fucking Simon. But at the end of the day, I guess how I it, we we kind of went a little different with how we designed these. I went on their games, and Simon has very rarely made a bad game for me. So I was they had to go up higher uh, because 
Blood Rage is phenomenal. Rising Sun is great. Ethnos is great. Arcadia Quest is good. The um, Starcadia Quest or Arcadia Quest? I've been hearing Starcadia Quest is killing Arcadia Quest. Really? I, I, I haven't played so it So someone yet, was but... selling it, and I was going to buy it, but I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> Tom Vassell, I was listening to Dice Tower, and he goes... He doesn't call it Starcadia Quest. He calls it Saint Arcadia's Quest. Saint Arcadia Quest. That's <laughs> funny. But I, I, I'm actually considering. I've thought about it. it because I was like, oh man, Arcadia Quest was just okay. He said that having the two characters instead of three is. I can see uh, that because that was the best part. But yeah, every time you played Arcadia Quest, every time I played it. There was like two really good people and your third fuck all. Mm-hmm. He's just like, okay, you destroy you you get in the way while my good characters can yeah. get in. So you can focus. Um Oh wow, they did root. No. <laughs> They're kind of in the same boat here. Um But the Cthulhu Death May Die is so just good it's game. so good. I, we, I think I'm almost thinking it's my favorite Simon game. I mean I It's not my favorite. Uh well it might be. I've played it so it's many times really in good. the past it's in the last year. Um Onk, I'm just gonna cream over probably. <laughs> um I might not. It could just, Egypt is one of those things where I'm really I like that lore, but I don't know anything about it. I'm just like, ooh, it's cool. Uh but And that's the thing, is like I'm I'm looking through their games here, and yeah, they still like I, I still hold by that they Oh, they're bloodborne. Ooh, they're bloodborne board game. It's probably going to be bad, but yeah, I don't care. I'll have the minis, <laughs> and I will just have those forever. Um, but that's the thing, is at least when you... They overuse Kickstarter, and that's what pisses me off. But when you go on their Kickstarter, it's just like, how much for the all-in? $300? Obviously, money is different for everyone, but it's just like, that's a lot of stuff. But you get... Sometimes you get, you get like two or 300 minis. Yeah. And I mean, you think about just the price per... And it, some of them are badass. Yeah, they're massive, dudes. and they're oh hate, mm-hmm. which was a shit tier game. Those minis were orgasmic. Uh, their latest one was Massive Darkness. The first edition was hot trash, but I think they, I didn't look into it that Kickstarter at all. Did you back the second one? No, I no, I didn't even watch. I didn't even go on their page because yeah. I was like, look, I don't care how much you revise it. Like I just. The angels and demons thing doesn't. Do that would have been story. cool, but it's still it's one of those things where I just I I disliked the first one so much that I wasn't even close to. It wasn't like maybe Summoner Wars where it's like okay I'll give maybe they'll balance it and I'll try it again later. I think the thing with Simon is because their minis are really good quality. Mm-hmm. Um, they know how to, they know how to make them. They're not warped. Them. You don't get warped bases. Right, but I will never forget. And Blood Rage mm-hmm. was they had, it hadn't been delivered yet, but they were at a, one of the game conventions. Yeah, and and they were people were uh, it was a it was a live feed. Yeah, and they were talking, and it was the, you know the sea monster mm-hmm. that has all the tentacles. Yeah, going everywhere. People were concerned that because yeah. of the stuff it's gonna break. So Eric Lane gets up. Chucks it against the wall about ten feet from him, like yeah. hard. He goes and picks it up, puts it back in front of the camera, and he goes, "It's all going to be good." Wow, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's insane. That, that that's uh, that just yeah. I mean, and that's why the they quality. were called initially cool mini or not because right. they have the best <clears throat> miniatures out on the market. Um, now at this point, most companies make good minis, um, but man, those hate minis. <sighs> Did you ever see them? Did just I ever show just you? Online, I haven't God. really seen any. They they were something else. Um, that was another game that I mean, game, whether the game was good or not, I just hated their their whole. Uh, it's not going to be available anywhere. You have yeah. to do this Kickstarter. It's like come, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, so they're busy, and they were audited <laughs> recently. I remember that was a talking point yeah. for. I never looked into it because I was like, yeah, they're a business. <laughs> like I think yeah. everyone gets audited, uh, but. Yeah, they, they're they still high quality. There's not a Simon game that, like, I wish they would do smaller games, like, because I'm looking, Gizmos was, I played at a Gen Con, um, I won, actually, while we were playing, and I was like, yeah, it's okay. Uh, but Ethnos was one that I really wish they kind of focused a little bit more on. That one's really solid. Um, they did the God of War card game. I don't like IPs like that. Uh, oh, they did the Grizzle, didn't they? Yes, they were part of that. 
The Grizzle was good. The Godfather, which is no longer talked about. That's a good game, too. It won some people's games of the year. Yeah, like, know, but... it's it's a solid game. Um, I'll get it on the channel at some point once I watch the movie, because I want to watch the movie first. So, uh, they did... Oh, they did Narcos. I played that one at um, Gen Con as well, and I was like, eh. Like, you really have to like Narcos, which I've seen some of the show, and I'm like, this is so boring. Yeah. Um... What else did they do? They yeah, they've did. Done they've done. They've done so minutes. much, but mainly their focus is massive, Amerith Amerithrash, um, mini heavy mini games. The one game that I want really bad from them, but I'd have to get the Kickstarter one to make it worth my while. Is I want to get the Zombie Side Black Plague with all that stuff. Oh yeah, that um, was another one. Because I don't have any of the Zombie Side. I sold all my other Zombie Side stuff, but yeah. I liked Zombie Side, and I think I would like the Black Plague stuff. Black Plague is def. I played you both, uh, and Black Plague was definitely better. Yeah. I just I, you you love zombies. I couldn't yeah. care less. Uh, they did Newton. That was a Euro game by them that I was really inter uh, interested in. They did Newton. Mm hmm. Yep. Because I remember. I, I think they did Newton. It's at least it's on here, but I remember that being cool, mini or not, because I, I wanted to try test it out at their booth, yeah. and it was always. Uh, oh. But then they did uh, the others, which was one of their early. Oh, and then they did the new Project Elite. Oh yes, which was fantastic. They picked up that game and yeah, they, they put their and that's actually that that is a benefit to cool mini or not being such a oh, sorry Simon come on whatever, <laughs> uh, is they can take dead games like that and be like hey we'll we'll yeah. we'll do it and. Uh, yeah, and make yeah, it a reality. Actually, lead actually did really good. Yeah, so I just I I was right there with you. <laughs> in Excuse okay, me. well, <clears throat> their business practice kind of pisses me off, but their games are just so damn good that I had to put them up there. So unfortunately, the three above them just do everything oh, they yeah. do, but it's just better. <clears throat> so that's my number four. All right, Simon, <clears throat> come, number... come on. <laughs> my number Whatever. four is a crossover. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> Level 99 games. Yeah. I thought so. No, no, I no. thought it'd be up there for you. <laughs> uh, you almost said it just a second ago when you were... You said Urrrr. Renegade? Yeah. Okay. Renegade. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't sure if it was going to be this high because we just had the Clank Legacy issue. Well, that's... If they fix it, it, it is. then yeah, that'll I mean, be fine. Um, I don't take much into Legacy games. You're like... I, you're more picky than I am. Yeah. When it with we literally couldn't play the game though because no no no, no oh. I know but as far as like the the stickers oh and I see and stuff that wouldn't but I just you just not, go. <laughs> not even in the right spot <laughs> well, no, I mean, <laughs> but like like when I'm playing Gloomhaven like I remember when Jaws line you're like trying to get it all lined <laughs> up perfect with the trees match the I'm just like I just put it on where the number is and go with it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even seen. I probably punch you. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> but uh, but no. Um, Raiders of the North Sea is one of my favorite games. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, that whole series is good. When they're bring they they did a good thing teaming up with Garfield Games and bring, bringing that whole all those series of games over with Paladins and Architects and all that stuff. But then, like I talked about earlier, they they went in with the solo series. Um, so that really has me intrigued. It, seems, yeah. it almost seems like every year to two years they're, they're going to try to put it on a new solo mm -hmm. game. Um, yeah, which most people don't do. Van Ryder is doing solo-only games. Right. Renegade has their, their signature solo thing. Well, a lot of people do it, but they don't like... Like, this is called the Solo Series. Yeah. Signature, signature Solo Series, I think is what it says in the box or yeah. something. So yeah, it's something like, like that. It's like they're going into it. Mm -hmm. You know, this is exactly what it's yeah. for. Uh, but yeah, like. Hostages. But it's a shame that their first game for that series sucks. Yeah. Ass. It was, it was good for what I mean. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You know, it's, I know you it, like it's not the grounds. greatest game in the world, sure. but when you're playing solo and it takes ten minutes to play yeah, game exactly. and stuff, it's it's it fits what it's needed to do. Now this Warp's Edge is going to be more in depth. It's okay. going to be. It's I think they're saying forty five minutes oh, wow. to an hour yeah. maybe. Um. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. But but anyway, um. Renegade also teamed up with uh, DLP, I think it was, and they brought over uh, Altiplano um, yeah, and stuff like right. that, which Altiplano, not the great. I mean, I came into it with a lot more expectations. Altiplano was good. It I just, just takes a long time. I couldn't get it to the table. Like I was yeah. like, okay, I need to try it with more people, but I never was like drawn to bring it back. But they do something better than Orleans, and you use your whole bag. Yeah, that's still that's the, the only one. mechanic that I wish Orleans would yep. 
would do. And maybe I don't know how that would change the game if you made if you made that a thing with the early, early on. So that would be interesting. If you just played a game and like, nope, you can't yeah, do anything until you empty your bag. I don't know. I mean, it's a shame they didn't do Altiplano stories, though. That would have been fucking great. <laughs> Might be good. I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't be. It's early on stories. Was horrible. But, uh, and then, like you said earlier, the, the bargain quest stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the unique themes and yeah. stuff. Do you have the sunken treasure, the, the new expansion that just came out I like did, a week yeah, or two yeah. ago? Yeah. Yep. See, I don't have that It's yet. somewhere. Um, I, it's, oh, it's, uh, oh, I don't know where it's at. Oh, yeah, it's over there. Okay. Um, I can't, uh, fit it into my box oh, so yeah yeah <laughs> oh they also did uh flip ships which yes. is the only dexterity game i own i've never played that uh, it's I've actually, super I've fun it, i've seen it play it feels like galaga a john, little bit john was playing where you, it you just kind of hands one time it's it's fun wait john like like ex-friend john or the owner of the store no no that ex you're okay you're, you're oh you're, i guess my ex-friend <laughs> the guy i hate most in this world that's not it's true it's like watching shrek <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> dexterity game. But anyway, yeah, I, I meant to mention flip ship with Renegade because <clears throat> I I've tried flick them up, I I've tried uh, catacombs, but flip ships I don't know I like it. It's just poof, and yeah. you're just like okay, let me just try and get in. Just poof. I need to get more dexterity games because those kind of games are fun. So yeah, all right, good deal. Yes, my number three, my number three is kind of your. Cephal affair, honestly, so I can't give you too much because mine's way higher. But here's the thing: my company has made uh, more games, and they're all different <laughs> instead of just the one. Uh, Awaken Realms is my number three. That'd be on there. They have made one game that I didn't like, and that was Lords of Hellas. <clears throat> Everything else that they have made has been almost immediate top ten, or some of the best story-driven thematic games that I've ever played. So they've made Nemesis. They've made The Edge Dawnfall, which is the only skirmish game that I have. We're doing a campaign for it right now. It's okay. But the skirmish... It's, it's a digestible, simple skirmish game. It's not like all these fiddly little rules. Okay, well, if you move here, you actually have to measure out, and then you have to blow to get the, the air of the wind, where if you can aim your air... It's just like... There's none of that shit. It's just very straightforward. Uh, this War of Mine is one of the best, I technically solo, you probably solo or two. Um, probably the best adaptation of a video game to a board game is is probably this War of Mine. Um, and then, of course, my favorite out of all of them is Tainted Grail. So they just put so much effort. This is a company that's also like, uh, oh, Simon makes good minis? Uh, let's actually take a look right, at, right. <laughs> at theirs. But they also do the Sun Drop. I can give or take their sun drop. It's it's definitely their Lords of Hellas sun drop look like shit. The Tainted Grail actually looks really good. They've also done they do have a new uh, distribution for their Awaken Realms Light, which is like going to be some lighter games. And then they're also they have a Tainted Grail video game that's coming out, which I've actually I had access to their beta, and it was pretty good. I was pretty I was surprised with actually how how good the the beta was, but. Yeah, they're just... I mean, they, what else do they have that's coming out? They have... Um, the Great Wall. The Great Wall, which is going to probably just be... That's their that's their uh, attempt at a Euro game. And then Etherfields, which yeah. is like their dreamscape, whatever. Yeah, that one shoot. looks interesting. Like, and they have just so much content. Like, I, for what I have for Tainted Grail, that's not even everything for it. There's like four more stories and just that... that they, their writing is actually legitimately good, too. You know how some games where you read and it has, like, a campaign, you're like, did a 14-year-old write this? Is this their diary that you mm -hmm. happen to just take from? And this is very cringy. I think their writing is fantastic. Nemesis is, like, semi-cooperative done right. Yes. Uh, they're just... When, Awa when Awaken Realms makes a game, I'm just, like, all in. Like, yeah. it, it, I, what, what's it about, like... The, the digestive system of the human body all in. <laughs> like, I, it, I, I really don't care. Uh, it's just the same. Lords of Hellas just didn't didn't work out, but I guess they've also done Seed Storm. Uh, is, did they do Seed Storm? I don't remember anything about that. I think that's like a little, like a card game. Yeah, thing, isn't it? it is, but uh, I don't remember their name ever. I don't, I don't I guess I just don't even remember that game. I don't think it went over very well, because I was trying to buy it I, off Facebook mm -hmm. one time. And now they just did Nemesis uh, Aftermath? Lockdown. Lockdown. That's what it is. 
And so they also have campaigns for that. That one is a straight ripoff of <laughs> the Alien movies. But it's a shame. I wish for this War of Mine, which they're, they're slowly releasing expansions uh, for it. I just wish they released more for it. But yeah, Awaken Realms is just phenomenal. So that's my number three. All right, my number three is Flying Frog. Okay, I thought they were your number one. No. <laughs> Flying... Obviously, they're your um, number three. Well, and... It's because it, you only have one game well, from I own, like. I've played the other, uh, several other, you mm. know, I've played Fortune and Glory. I've played the the uh, Touch of Evil 10th oh, Anniversary yeah. Edition now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shadows of Brimstone is still my... That's, lifestyle game. That's I kind, guess, that's kind of their their lifestyle game. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, there's just so much. Like I, I'm complaining about room in my game area. If I just took <laughs> all my brimstone, all the, the file boxes, yeah. and cases, and everything, and just go put them somewhere, I'd, I'd be able to have be fine. Well, you have them in like plastic storage boxes, yeah. right? Put those down. Um, <laughs> so it's like they. Uh, you play Last Night on Earth. Uh, that's their zombie. I one. have not, but I've watched it being played gotcha. I, I haven't had a chance to do that one yet um a touch of evil though was i i really enjoyed that um, play that gen con it's flying frog yeah <laughs> everything's rolling right or not rolling right <laughs> everything is roll and move yeah sorry um but uh <laughs> I, their games are almost nostalgic like the, like they, they they play like an older style of game a lot of their stuff with the the roll and moves yeah. and Old so, mechanics, and it, so it brings back, it brings back too. a lot of stuff with mm -hmm. a lot of the old games I used to play and stuff, and and then this Shadows of Brimstone being it, what it is and how expansive it all is and everything. Um, a lot of people give the company crap because it takes a long time for their Kickstarters to arrive and stuff, but you get so much crap in yeah. their Kickstarters. I mean, uh, everything on their Board Game Week page they have you know, nine pages, uh, you know, five or six of them is Shadows of Brimstone stuff. And I pretty much have... Do you have everything for that? I'm missing... Not counting the Kickstarter that's out, obviously, because I don't have that stuff. Oh, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. the stuff from the... Because there's a Phase 3 stuff from the Forbidden Fortress, mm -hmm. stuff that hasn't shipped yet. Gotcha. I have everything except for two released enemy sets. Wow. And then a couple of the heroes, which I don't buy the heroes because yeah. there's so many heroes anyway. They were, yeah. But I mean, I'm talking like my my dragon that stands this mm -hmm. tall and my Belial that stands about, you know, and it's, it's just, and, and I hate it. Like, I never bought this game because I never put together a miniature in my life. Right. And then I started buying this, and I was like, I'm going to try this. And now I love putting minis together. So it's like... Oh, buy KDM, man. That's all you'll do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyway, Flying Frog, you know, they they are a small company. You like their but, um, deck building game, don't you? The Touch oh, yeah. of Evil Dark Gothic? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Dark Gothic deck building game. I was, that was looking, a, I was like, oh, yeah, that's there. <laughs> that was a foray into a non-miniatures-based game. Yeah. And, and it's an awesome game. It's it's different because you actually have three resources to spend. Yep, they, they did the, that in the Touch of Evil, right? You had the three right, resources. Right, right. So that's how you, what you do to defeat, but you know, there's Mystic mm -hmm. and all that jazz. But so anyway, it's it's uh, they just keep pumping out stuff, and yeah, I mean, it takes a long time to show up. But a lot of people can say that about Simon now. I mean, it True. takes a long time to get their stuff, and you know. I think the detail yeah. on these big because they can you have to put them together so they could put more detail onto stuff. Yeah, I mean at least the, whenever you're putting uh, flying for frog production uh, minis together, at least it's like okay, so with this okay this massive dragon, let's put this together. Oh, there's ten pieces for fucking <laughs> KDM. It'd be like okay, here's the wing. Right. All right, you need to put these little fucking hands. There's seven hundred of them. You need to glue <laughs> them onto this wing. And then you have to take... It's just like, why? Yeah, why? at least it's manageable. You like putting minis together because they're not cumbersome. Like, yeah. So, so anyway, Flying Frog, I just get... I, I You know, a lot of people also give them crap because of their stupid, like, B-movie so photography art, which they don't do in... They do in every other one of their games except for Shadows, Shadows of Brimstone. Shadows of Brimstone, you're right. But I don't mind it. I, I think it's... It's... it's, it's 
I you know? I don't mind it either. It's, it's very unique. bad. Yeah, it it's is bad, but bad. I think they do it just with that. Yeah, why not? It's tongue in cheek. They, I mean, they still put fucking CDs in uh, in their games to play the music. I mean, <laughs> even for for Red Forge, it's like who plays CDs anymore? <laughs> like they need to just put poor them, people. They need God, MP three file or something, and, <laughs> and let you download it or put it on iTunes or something. It but, probably you know it's probably on Spotify. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> be, but it's like we, every game they put out has that damn disc to, in it. I have to look it up. I have to see <laughs> if like their Shadows of Brimstone stuff is on Spotify because that would crack me up. So just it's just it's just they I I think they try to pretend to be a like an early two thousands board game company, you know, or late nineties. It's just kind of kind of interesting how right. they do it. Okay, I don't think it's on here. Uh, there is a playlist called Shadows of Brimstone, but I don't think it's theirs. That would crack me up though if they had the uh, like the the CDs on Spotify, but they still released a CD. Yeah. So, but anyway, right. yep. <clears throat> Flying Frog. My number two uh, is the company that has my favorite game on it, and that is Stone Meyer Games. So, Stone Meyer Games is all but perfection. In, in their games. Now, apparently there's a lot of weird fucking, you know, social media drama surrounding that. I couldn't give two shits because it is not affecting the games that are coming out. Stonemeyer, one, Jamie is very up in front about how he runs his business. He runs a, he runs a vlog, he runs a blog that you could go out and read that he'll ask, answer questions on, well, why do you do things like this? Why do you do things? And he'll answer. Um... Like, so that's that's awesome. This is actually out of all these. This is the only company that I actually know about the company a lot more. Kind of like how you with <laughs> with uh uh, what was it? Plat hat. Plat hat. So, uh, but Stonemeyer just every almost every game they do just does it for me. Between two castles, Mad King Lufid. Between two cities, Scythe obviously is my favorite game. Um, Wingspan. The uh, Viticulture, like, chart, well, chart was, was okay. Uh, Euphoria, like, I could do a top 10 Stonemaier games because they would just be, like, they're all almost so good. I mean, I really like Pendulum. They're a real-time game. Uh, it's themeless, in, you know, for all intents of the word, but it's a solid game. Like, the only game that they've really done that I didn't like, like, and even vehemently disliked it, was Tapestry. Um, but they've been extremely, uh, they supportive of, of the channel. You know, they're actually, I'm, I'm a reviewer for them that they'll send me copies. They'll reach out to me to do review copies. Cause they know I'll get it done when they fucking ask me to, cause I'm a responsible human being <laughs> and they said to me months in advance that I can get one video done in a month. Uh, but yeah, they're just, they're so good. Like I think. I have given, I mean, a scythe is a 10. Between two cities and between two castles are 10s. Just, I mean, for what they, in comparison to those types of games. Right. Charterstone, I think I would like more if I played with more people. I did not like it at 2. Um, and the story was okay. Euphoria is is fantastic. Their expansion for that was not needed at all. Uh, even what they did with My Little Scythe, which was a, some guy's variant to yeah. play with his daughter, they're just like, "Oh, hey, let's uh, let's make a game." Well, on they've that. done that with uh, was it the Wind Gambit for the uh, uh, oh for for Scythe because that was a fan made deal and he took one of the expansions for Scythe was a yeah. fan made deal that he took yeah and yeah made yeah, yeah you're right I mean he's done that with a few things and it's like mm -hmm. that's awesome you know the, yeah I mean in the expansions for Scythe for example they've had. Uh, you know, the encounters was just more encounter stuff. They have their latest one, well, it's not an expansion, but they have a uh, spiral bound rule book that I have. That's all the. All it's everything. The like, uh, you know, the Rise of Fenris uh, campaign, all that stuff's in there, um, which is fantastic. And they do something really interesting with some of their games, is they have like little numbers on them, and they do that for like QA things where it's like hey how does this work and you put it in the tile and people can actually go read about it oh, and be like oh okay it's this tile uh i will be mm -hmm. you know at this point uh, depending on when like if this goes up before this but there i was one of 12 people to actually get tapestry and their expansion plans employees 
uh, sent to me. Because most people were like, hey, let us know if you need just the expansion or if you need both. And I'm like, well, I don't like Tapestry. They sent me a review copy again just because I asked for it. I'm like, you know what? I'll give it another shot. Uh, still didn't really like it. But the fact that for him, what he does is all the reviews he doesn't watch. Because if he watched me do Tapestry, then he'd probably be like, I don't want to send him any other games. Like, he didn't like this one. It's like, what, what about the ten others of, it, of your reviews? So, Stonemeyer is just one of those companies that I am head over heels for. I mean, you can call me biased for whatever reason. Um, if you have a problem with how he acts or whatever on social media, keep that away from me. I, I couldn't care less. But Stonemeyer Games, their games are fucking almost perfection. And that's my number two. Yep, perfect. My number two is a crossover. Is it Stonemeyer Games? No. I hate you. They were close. Oh, uh, la, 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 la. oh, well, who would it be? Would it be AEG? Yeah. Wow. I put them up at number two because some of my most played games and some of my favorite games, I mean, I've played so many things from them. Mm -hmm. You know, Smash Up being just a, a rock solid deal. Yeah. Um, Thunderstone Quest. I've been playing the... I, I have all the stuff over there. I um, haven't touched the... I, I've only been playing with the barricades mode, the solo gotcha. stuff. But still, it's just a, it's an awesome Yeah, system. I, I have a feeling I'll like it. But um, once again, I'm infinitely replayable. Right, right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> um, and then one of my most played games of all time, even more than Netrunner, which I touted thousands of games of that. Mm -hmm. Actually, I guess it probably... I, never mind. I'll take that back. <laughs> my playing? second most played game, probably. <laughs> I was like, really? Love Letter. <laughs> Oh, okay. Because um, we've played, I mean, when we go on trips, it's just constant. Just, yeah. It's tons and tons of games of that. Uh, space Base. I love Space Base. Um, that was another one I meant to bring up. Yeah. yeah space and, Base is and, pretty good. Uh, they even were a part of, I think, maybe a bring over thing with Istanbul. Oh, um, yeah. They had their fit it, fing it, their fingers in it somehow, mm -hmm. one way or the other. But, um, but just all that stuff. And, and again, with this prominent as the company as they are mm -hmm. like the use with smash up they get the community involved you know that's how some of the expansions came they had oh, they had yeah. that that like the march madness tournament where they had all these different deals and you get on the website and you'd vote and then so that's how that one the uh it's your fault or whatever yeah and, yeah um and that was made because of the tournament yeah and there was voting right. deals and stuff and they would take ideas like mm -hmm. that you can they had a deal where you could submit ideas and then they would yeah do stuff you know so they also did that surprise with like the sharknado or you know yeah, the sharks. yeah they just like the, the they just threw the in, tornadoes in there the sharks it was a tornado one, one yeah. yeah they threw tornadoes because they had the four and because they always come with four and yeah. you're just like oh okay and then it's like oh yeah there's a fifth one well in then here. they have like the, it's like okay if you just uh email us we'll send you the sheep yeah or whatever and you got that other one that i don't even, didn't even know about Penguins? I thought, yeah, or penguins? I don't have that one. And yeah. I'm bummed that I don't have I think that. I have everything but... for it. I even have the play mat, which is yeah. now outdated. <laughs> yeah, so, so they, anyway. They yeah. will end, I, I firmly believe they will end with the biggest, geekiest box. When you, you can think fill it. I think, I think there will be one more box. Oh, God. <laughs> I think that's how they will end Smash Up. Because they can't, they can't go forever. At some point, I mean, even at this point, you got to admit, a lot of factions are similar. Is, is it just, I mean... When was the last expansion, though? It's been a long time. Uh oh, that's a good question, actually. Because let's, it's let's like because I haven't, I haven't had an expansion come for. It's gonna be the Marvel one. That's well, that'll well, be right. The, but I mean, like the they, they used to have maybe two or three a year, and I don't know if maybe the COVID mm, thing slowed right. it down or what. But it's it probably been, did. Their latest, their one, last one was the. Uh, uh, oh gosh, I did. There's so many. Yeah, I know. I just the the newest one though. I remember getting like. Gosh, a long time ago, and usually they bigger were... geekier box was 2018. All Stars was 2017. Uh, Titans, Smash Up uh, Titans was, was 2018. Uh... Penguins was 2019. Um, why is it only showing six for expansions on Smash Up? That's annoying. Yeah, but anyway, it, they haven't put out anything recently, and I don't know if it's just because of the uh, the whole COVID thing yeah. or, or whatever. But because they were put popping out two or three a year. Mm -hmm. pretty consistently and there hasn't been one for a while um oops no world tour yeah Culture when, and that was oh and then world tour international incident that was 2019 yeah so i mean it's actually been it's been a year 
but yeah, they pushed him. But I, they probably were working on this merger yeah. with Smash Up Marvel. Yeah. So so anyway, I mean, it's it's one of those games that are companies, and you had talked about Edge Darkness and yeah. the card crafting system and stuff like that. They they have a lot of stuff, and if you really sit and think about what they have, it's they've made their conglomeration on card game. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like they, there's a few minis in Quest and Thunderstone Quest, and there's a few mini, you know, there's some minis and stuff with Edge of Darkness. Yeah, but primarily they are a card, card, yeah, card based card company, company, and they're once still atop one of the bigger companies. Yeah, that's true. So, yep, yeah, that's my number two. All right, Alderac Entertainment Group. Yeah, that name's weird. I don't get it. <laughs> Can you guess my number one? Probably Fantasy Flight. It is Fantasy it's mine Flight. Too. Oh, is it? <laughs> yes. I just I assumed. Um, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, Stonemaier. It was it was hard because Stonemaier has my favorite game, which is Scythe, and I just gave talked about how much that a lot of Stonemaier games are almost tens out of tens or perfects. Fantasy Flight has both the quantity and the quality. And even though now they, they focus on, like, three things, Cthulhu and Marvel. And Star Wars. And Star Wars. They were such a big influence on my hobby, six, whatever, how many years it's been, that as I was looking through their games, I was like, that's good, that's good, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all these, are, all these are fantastic. And when I was thinking, well, what games have they done that I don't like? There were very surprisingly very little. And I mean, we're going to be doing a top 10 of Fantasy Flight games out of all the ones that I sent you to do. Fantasy Flight was the only one that I could actually do without being like, I don't really like this, but yeah. I kind of do, so I'll put it at 10, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, Fantasy Flight I was like, this one. And I had a huge list, and I was like, oh man, I need to get, to get it down to 10. So. Yeah, I mean, Fantasy Flight just—they do things right. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, and I am a big time, and I know you play some of them too. But uh, coming out with that LCG mm-hmm. format of putting it, you know, where everybody has the same card pool and stuff, because Netrunner yeah. was my first foray into the LCG yeah. stuff, and and being able to play competitively, even keel instead of being Magic, where you're buying, you can pay to win. Pretty much, stuff. yeah. Um, and then they went into the story modes with, mm-hmm. the, with the Arkham Horror and Mark or Marvel Champions yeah. and stuff. Plus, I'm a huge Star Wars nut, and mm-hmm. they have the Star Wars license. So yeah. any kind of game in, in the Star Wars universe you want, they pretty much have. Yep. Whether they have the miniatures, card- yeah. whether it's card games, whether yep. it's... Yeah. You, you know, and... The only thing bad about Fantasy Flight is they're not great with keeping things going. That is my... Like it's yes. it's they <laughs> like if it's really like and it's it's some of it's not their fault. Games Workshop didn't want to work with them, so they're just like right. fine. We're just gonna leave, and that that pulled a lot of their things. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of the board gaming hobby, Fantasy Flight's the IP carrier. I mean that I mean who who can run Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and afford to actually pay right. for those licenses. Yep. Uh, obviously Cthulhu is is open source so they don't have to pay for any of that. Um but yeah, Netrunner died, their Game of Thrones card game died. And all their competitors except for Le- L5R, L5R and it's getting ready to. You think? Yeah, I, I'm pretty They keep it's, releasing stuff for I know, but I think it's stuff they have in the pipe. I, I really think yeah. they're going to go strictly Well, here's cooperative. the thing. Because they also run their um, tabletop RPGs, which their L5R is, I'm actually in a campaign of it right now, is Fantasy Flight's new system. And the card, or the, the tournament, and I think the old tournament for the old system did the same thing, was whoever wins the tournament, that's actually tied into the story in some way. So I don't know. Maybe they can keep both those going with the RPG and mm-hmm. the and the card game. I don't play the card game, so I I don't know. But yeah, like they just they just I mean yeah, they, and they and they aren't you know they they aren't necessarily the greatest miniatures company. They no. don't win awards for miniatures. No, but they win awards because they pump the shit out and they have good writing and they have good yeah 
good good graphic design. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, their stuff good, looks great. Good. Components, except yeah. for their damn box inserts. That's, oh, that's, yeah. gonna, that's a side note. There's, <laughs> their box it's inserts always suck. bad. They're 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 always going to be trash. They'll yeah. never fix that. Um, but you know, like they single handed and, and and again, like well, Covenant. Mm -hmm. the covenant store oh that yeah we do you know when they were creating their store they did not want to do me magic they wanted to be something else yeah so they took their lcg stuff and that's i mean so that they and face flight teamed with them and did it I yeah mean, so they they just have so much good stuff right i mean when i was really getting hot i've been in the hobby for a long time but when i was really really started buying stuff mm -hmm. fantasy flight was the place i looked at exactly and that's where i got most of my exactly. stuff to start with yeah um, and i mean that's what i mean because we're, we're trying not to sp say specific games just because we have, we're doing the top right. 10 for it but if you're interested in the games you can go check out that top 10 but yeah you're right like it's 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 the fact that nostalgia factor for ffg they were who I was like, oh, boom, that's who I'm going to uh, buy from. Right. Um, and they were just always fun, thematic, great games. And then their living card games, like you said, are just are so good. Well, and they're good and consistent. Like, their delivery mm -hmm. windows are pretty solid. Like, there isn't, like, usually, I say that, you know, but on I mean, normal circumstances, they are pretty decent at getting their stuff out timely manner and stuff. Well, they pump out so much that it's like, if you buy all of it... I mean, chances are you're probably not playing it as quickly as they're pumping it out. Mm -hmm. So then by the time it does start to, like, uh, with Arkham Horror, um, then it's like, okay, there's so much shit for that. It's insane. And now they're just doing, they do off-the-wall stuff, like the Barkham Horror. Yeah. Which is like, what the hell is that? Or they're the side things with, like, the uh, the blob that ate everything or that haunted house one. What, so wasn't the dog one like a fan made one? And they I, have took no it? Idea. I, I almost think I remember it being a fan made one. It was either going to be dogs they, or cats, wasn't and they it? They took it. I think you're right. Um, I don't know if it was fan made. It might have been fan voted. I be barely remember. Well, and because what they do, and and I know this is, Fantasy Flight will they have their own printing deal. Oh, okay. So like a lot of their expansions uh, are print on demand. Oh, not yeah. Like like I'm not talking like when you get your cards like your Marvel Weirdly Champions or shaped, stuff like yeah. that. But you get like with uh, games like um, Death Angel. Oh, and, you know okay. those little clamshell expansions you can mm -hmm. get. They print. They w would print them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Their own deal. So like, I remember the first Mansions of Madness did that. Mm -hmm. Their print on demand. Yeah. And they, the cards were expansions. always weird and right, cut but they, weird. They were making them their own self gotcha. so that they wouldn't have to. You know. But yeah. I think things have changed a lot. So, of that. I mean, I will say though, it is kind of a shame the Fantasy Flight does really just do three things. Yeah. Like so, like if you don't like those three things and you're not like out of out of all the companies here probably the two all the ones that we just mentioned have the variety um today like all the games that are coming out has more variety than what fantasy flight does but in the whole lifespan of what fantasy flight as a company was doing as a publisher they just have the variety as well as the the consistency for if you like i mean granted we like superheroes and we like i like cthulhu and you like Cthulhu as well, so it's like great. Keep doing what you're doing, and I'm happy. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see where we'll see where they're at, you know, down the line. Yeah. You know, whenever it's just like, God, can you guys make something else? <laughs> like, geez. So, but as of right now, I'm good. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, so I'm surprised. Well, and that's what I was going to bring up. I there was a couple that I really wanted to get on my list i'd already yeah, brought sure. up let's I'd, talk about them well no i was just gonna say just a footnote chip theory i was wanting to put on yep one of Couldn't them do it because i played one game right and there was one i wanted to try to shoehorn in somehow but it didn't it was blacklist i thought they were um, going to be on your list honestly well, if our if our uh alter quest was out mm. and if i had played brook city you put fucking cephal affair on your list man for gloomhaven but i'd only play the only game of theirs i had played was was um Street, Ma or Street Masters. You haven't played Brook City? I haven't played it yet. Oh, okay. So, I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be good. It's and, cop and Street And Hour of Need is coming and stuff. So Hour of Need's coming. So uh, I figure if we that, ever revisit. That new one with the guy from Defenders of the Realm and the Sentinels of the Multiverse. Oh, the something five. Yeah, Freedom Five. Freedom Five, Freedom yeah. Five, that'll be... Uh, yeah, you're right. Blacklist. I was going to mention them. Um, I thought they were going to be on your list, so I was like, oh, I'll get a chance to talk about them. Uh... But Blacklist is one of those companies that is like, 
Oh, I'm I'm immediately interested. Yeah, they're, uh, they're taking off. Specifically, the two designers, the Sa- uh, Sadler, Sadler brothers. Uh, and what's great about that company is I was able to actually reach out to one of the brothers, and he hooked me up with mm-hmm. Street Masters and Brook City stuff. Um, so that was awesome. But yeah, I was trying to think. Uh, all the companies. Oh, I threw away my my list of of all of them, but. Yeah, I mean these are just phenomenal ones. Out of uh, these are the ones. The reason why they made the list is because if they're coming out with a game, I'm immediately interested. Mm-hmm. Um, Mythic Games didn't make it because their rule books are fucking hot trash, and they they pump out a game, and then it's just like, well, we don't know really know how to play your game, and they're like, oh, here's an errata, and it's like, why don't you wait? Um, I know you're looking at all my games. Well, who makes Everdell? Everdell is um, Starling. Oh, okay, that's right. Starling Games. I and some other. once again, I couldn't... I mean, even though if there's a company that I'm like, wow, I really love their game, <laughs> you know, I couldn't mm-hmm. just put... I, I, when I'm narrowing it out to technically 11, I was like, I can't just take off one because I like one publisher's one game. Hence, I love Gloomhaven, 10 out of 10 game. That's all, that's all, that's all they have right now. So, uh, I mean... Yeah. Oh, I almost, I almost did Eagle Griffin. That was. But I was like my twelve. That was the last one. Really? Off before I put. uh, um, Van Ryder. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, because I was like, well, technically, has Eagle Griffin always done Vila Lasarda games? Well, they did Defenders of the Realm. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. So So I was like, well, that's just technically one designer. So I wanted, I went for variety. Um, hell, even the people who did Seven Wonders repost, but then I'm like, well, that's really. Su-. I'm surprised none of us well, had Stronghold. Well, and uh, Lucky Duck. Was Lucky another Duck one was I was another one. About. You know, it's just kind of. Yeah. There's a lot of there's, stuff. It's that not that they're be... bad publishers. Like yeah. Lucky Duck is phenomenal, but once again, they're up and coming. So, like, they easily could make this list. The reason why Awakened Realms made it is because they've had six games that have been rock mm-hmm. solid. Uh, versus Lucky Duck with Chronicles of Crime, you know? Uh, oh, and Vikings Gone Wild. But there's just... There's so many games out there and so many publishers. I mean, Leader Games. I, mean, we got, I know we keep talking about other other things, but Leader Games, they did Root and Vast. Right. But I didn't like Vast. I even gave it another shot years later, and I still didn't like it. But Root's phenomenal, but it's like, well, I can't just give it to them. Stronghold, surprisingly, only had like a few games that I liked. Which was terraforming Mars, um, Paper Tales, yeah, and then Stronghold. You know the the one v one game. Thunderworks was another one I had considered with role, role player, player and yeah. lock up and. I didn't like lock. You didn't like lock up either. For it, you know, but, um, but I mean, but yeah, role player. So it's like there's a lot of publishers out there that have really solid games, but it's like, well, that's one game out yeah. of these ten who I can at least like. Obviously, as it goes from eleven to one. I can name more games that are fantastic, hence why they're higher. But, yeah, I mean, just look out for any of these publishers. They're fantastic. Um, So, that's it, everyone. That is our top ten publishers. Let us know what your favorite publishers are in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.